So I want to start a new segment on this channel, which I'm going to call Outrage. I want to take the time to talk about something social, political, or just anything else that's bothering me, analyze it, and put my opinion out there on YouTube. So like this video if you think it's a good idea, that way I'll know that you want to hear about my social, my political, and just my intellectual opinions, because quite frankly, I think this channel needs that sometimes. It gets a little weird here, and um, we got to bring it back to reality. So for the first episode of this, or whatever you want to call it, I want to talk about Abercrombie and Fitch and their CEO, Mike Jeffries. Now stay with me here because this sounds like a rant about business or marketing or just something god-awful. But about a week ago, an interview was uncovered from a website called Salon.com that quoted Jeffrey saying, In every school, there are cool and popular kids, and then there are not-so-cool kids. Candidly, we go after the cool kids. We go after the attractive, all-American kid with a great attitude and a lot of friends. A lot of people don't belong in our clothes, and they can't belong. Are we exclusionary? Absolutely. Abercrombie's actually been criticized in the past because they don't carry women's clothes above a size large, but in men's, they carry extra-large and extra-extra-large. So for from this, you can see that when Jeffries also says, We hire good looking people in our stores because good looking people attract other good looking people and we want to market to cool, good looking people. We don't market to anyone other than that. It's clear that's true. What doesn't make sense to me though is that this all of a sudden shocks people. Abercrombie has always marketed their clothing to the so called beautiful people, which is pretty obvious when you walk into their dark, perfume infested stores with half naked models all over the place. What I want you to understand though is I'm not standing here saying that people shouldn't be criticized the CEO based on comments that he made seven years ago. But what I do think is that it's important to understand that these comments are just a small piece to a bigger picture. No matter what people think, those outside of the ordinary are not considered to be as valuable as those who are in that scope by both large companies and a large portion of society. Those who happen to be overweight or underweight aren't really considered to be beautiful by these companies and quite honestly, that does not make a lot of sense to me. When you look at the retail world, there are companies like American Eagle or H&M that don't actually do this and sell to people of all sizes. But even still, the majority of their advertisements focus on this all-American, perfect figure that quite honestly, no one I have ever met has. As well, people who are overweight have to shop at other stores that aren't part of the arguably mainstream stores because those stores don't cater to them and they have to go to these other ones that have developed specifically for their body sizes. I don't know, I mean, it's like it's some weird sort of segregation or something. But here, I can understand the argument that companies don't sell outside of the norm because they make less money doing that. But I think companies need to understand that they don't come across as doing this because they make less money. They come across as doing this because they seem to be idealizing the average perfect, apparently, person and leaving the not-so-average person behind in the dust. Overall here, my point is that the retail industry clearly still produces images of perfection, but these images work on society because society buys into them. So in my opinion, it's up to the general public to reject the false idea that there are perfect people other than Beyonce, of course, and that apparently everybody in society dresses and acts the exact same. Who knew? I didn't. But I buy into it too. I mean, I'm wearing H&M right now. It goes completely against my argument. So even people who do agree that this is a problem buy into it and make it a bigger problem as well. And I could go on and on about this subject because it's extremely complicated and there are so many different perspectives to it. But at the end of the day, I just think that yes, companies bully people, but people take it and they accept it. So there's fault on both sides. But I'm gonna stop there and I wanna hear what you have to think. So comment below, down there, and let me know, should Abercrombie be receiving all the criticism that it's been getting all week? Does society really have a fault in this kind of bullying and this idea of perfectionism as well? And just any other thoughts that you have on this example of Abercrombie and just kind of the bigger picture. So that is it for me today. I hope you all have a fantastic week. I will talk to you all next Friday. And until then, David out. Bye.